right, welcome back to Seller Sessions. I have uh, been away for a couple of weeks. I haven't been away, I've just not made content for a couple of weeks. Um, just because it's been super busy and it was school holidays. Um, and finally, my son has started school, so I am back. I tend to create content which is around things that I'm going through. Um, for the last two years, I've been hardcore into product development, meaning it expands beyond just on an Amazon level. I'm not only working on things that are launched on Amazon necessarily. Um, I've worked on so many different types of projects, which has introduced me to many different types of packaging. Now, I will make a separate video and podcast um, about how we choose what is the right type of design that we have on the packaging, because there's a lot of psychology that goes into that. Um, and the whatever, there are different things when it comes to packaging. Sometimes um, we use our packaging in the main image, and then the way that we approach the design on the packaging in the main image, um, sorry, the way that we approach the design on the packaging um, is a little bit different compared to when we want, we're not using the packaging in the main image and we wanna give them a wow factor. We've got a highly differentiated you know, type of box. The way that we approach it is different. So we need to understand very well our buyers. We need to understand uh, the uses for the packaging, etc. That I will make in a separate podcast. Today, we're gonna to be speaking about the different types of packaging, I think. Um, I've got 12 here. I can't remember whether it's 10 or 12. Um, this is in a presentation form, but of course, if you're listening to this on the uh, podcast, um, you know, you should still be able to get quite a bit of information, but just know that on uh, the YouTube channel, you will be able to actually see examples of what I'm about to explain. Whether you're a new seller or a seasoned seller, this can still help you because um, you know maybe you didn't know that different types of packaging existed. Maybe it can help you to be more um, efficient when it comes to your FBA fees and your shipping fees um, by you know changing the type of packaging they're currently using, or you know maybe you can use your packaging as a differentiation point. You can change to a different packaging. Uh, maybe you didn't know that certain types of packaging exists. So that's what you're going to talk about today. So let's start. So the different types of packaging. So the first um, and most popular uh, bo uh, type of packaging is the paperboard box, also called a paper box. I have got on the screen different designs and examples. So a paperboard box is a paper-based material that is strong yet lightweight. It's very cost effective. When I say very, it's more cost effective than different types of packaging often. Very popular when it comes to packaging and e-commerce uh, specifically as well. It can be cut into custom shapes and structures very, very easily. It's classic packaging that is standard and folds open and shut. It is made by turning fibrous materials that come from wood or from recycled waste paper into pulp and then bleaching it. I hope that I said that word right. <laughs> um, fibrous, fibrous, I, I don't know how to pronounce the, that specific word. I actually had to Google how these are made. Um, and paperboard is compatible with various printing methods. So you can add logos, graphics, or any other designs to enhance the box's appearance. Um, Many of our products are uh, paper bo box, uh, have paper box type of packaging. We also have a few other um, packaging that I'll mention here as well. The thing about paper box packaging is it is collapsible. So it is also, so for example, if you actually source your products in America, but you want to um, source the packaging in China, you could have the boxes sent to you flat, so they'd arrive flat, and then you put them together in America, and that's when you can bundleize the product there. Um, and in general, they are uh, lightweight, cost-effective, um, and even though it's technically looked at as like cheap packaging, the type of printing and the types of graphics and the way that you design the box can still make it look um, really, really good. So 
many, many, many people use this type of packaging. And yeah, so that's paper box. Second type of packaging that I um, will give an example is obviously the OPP bags or PP bags or poly bags, um, where they are basically a clear plastic bag, very common in private label, less, not necessarily less, less recommended on a branding level because you can do different things with it. Um, but yeah, so it's a clear, clear plastic bag. Um, it requires a suffocation warning label, so take that into consideration. It's very cheap, very inexpensive. Um, the OPP sheet is folded at one side and sealed at the other and has a self-adhesive seal at the top tongue. That's what it's called. Um, and obviously, you can also add a header card to the top of the packaging if you're looking at this uh, if you're looking at the screen as I show this on YouTube then you can see examples of what I mean by a header card um, for people that do use an OPP bag if you can see my screen there is a here it's either a pillow or a blanket and it's got an OPP bag but it has on the front of it um, and obviously inside of the bag it has an insert and that's where the branding is. And then on the back, it also has an insert. So there's an insert on the front, an insert on the back. And that's where also on the insert on the back, that's also where the barcode, the FNSQ is also printed. Um, so you can also brand your OPP bag that way. By the way, you can still make OPP bags look good. You can print on OPP bags. Um, and you can obviously put inserts on them as well. Remember that you absolutely have to have a suffocation uh, warning on all OPP bags, basically. So that is the second type of uh, packaging. Next is shrink wrap and vacuum pack. So shrink wrap is a plastic film that is wrapped around an object and then heated to shrink tightly over it. This is useful for several reasons. So um, if you are watching this on YouTube, you can see on the left hand side, I'm showing what shrink wrap is. Many, uh, if I try to think of an example, many, for example, kids uh, board games are often shrink wrapped, right? So that's what shrink wrap is. And then vacuum seal involves placing items in a plastic bag and then using a machine that then removes all of the air um, and it seals it shut. Um, it's very popular, obviously, in, in food storage, but also very popular specifically on an Amazon level as well. So, for example, if you're selling uh, things like pillows or um, or blankets or, or things like that, that can be very, very easily, or clothing, etc., that can be very, very easily then put in a bag and taken all the air out and have it vacuum sealed, it reduces dramatically the uh, dimensional weight, uh, the dimension, sorry, of the product, which will help you on, not the dimensional weight, I meant to say the dimension of the products, which will help you uh, both on a storage level, you can fit more units into a carton, and then obviously also on an FBA level. So definitely look into that um, as well. The next type of packaging is a pillow box. Pillow boxes are inexpensive and very lightweight. Um, due to the unique curved shape, it can be challenging to accurately determine the size needed. It's highly recommended to request a sample box for your design dimension for testing before placing a bulk order. It's less efficient than normal you know, cube type boxes due to the curved design on both sides during shipping. Um, but they look cool and they can sometimes make uh, sense for certain types of products. I have an example of what pillow boxes are on the screen right now. The next type is foil, sealed, or pouch bags. Um, pouch bags are a form of flexible packaging. They're made either with several layers of aluminium, plast plastic, or similar food grade materials. Pouch films are also known as stand-up bags, plastic pouch, or doy pack. Uh, of course, logos can be printed on a pouch or a sticker can be stuck on as well. Not just logos, anything can be printed on a, uh, on a pouch bag. Um, they're very lightweight, so it's very cost-effective. 
Um, often they, so not often, it is sealed. Not often, it's always, it's sealed. So it gives a san- sanitization uh, type of feeling as well. And they're pretty cheap when it's standard. It can get more expensive when they are printed on. So some of the products that we sell, uh, a certain type of product type that we sell, we have it, um, it comes in a foil seal, so a pouch bag. And um, it's, it's complicated to explain. Both in a paper box and also inside of it, our, our, our pouch bags as well. We specifically have stickers stuck on rather than having it printed just because it's cheaper for that specific product, but it still looks good. They can also come in multiple colors. They can come in, I think, any color. We specifically have gold, but there's also silver and black. Pretty sure you can have all colors as well. Um, And they can also have little see-through windows as well. Um, These often used for food but can they can also be used for so many different types of of packaging and you know what sometimes it's also a great differentiation point for a product that you wouldn't think that would come in a pouch bag for it to come in a pouch bag so I think that there was at some point I don't know if you guys remember maybe some of you sell them remember the the burrito blankets they're basically blankets that kind of look like a burrito and there were some sellers that had them um like folded to look like an actual burrito and then they they actually put them in like aluminium type of packaging and there was someone else that I saw a couple of years ago that also put one into a pouch bag as well like which is kind of weird you put a blanket in a pouch bag so sometimes that can also be a part of the differentiation point uh, as well so that's pouch bags Number five, there are also mailer bags. So mailer bags are typically used for mailing, but they can also be used as packaging. Um, A lot of people that are testing sometimes products, or let's just say if you sell DIY products or handmade products or you're 3D printing, you may use mailer bags as the actual packaging. Um, You know, lots, very often textile types of products like clothing would be used, you'd be using a a mailer type bag. Some people who prefer to sort of like upgrade from an OPP bag may use a mailer bag as uh, as well. They can be custom printed. They're not very expensive. Obviously it it depends. Um, And like I said, they're very often used for soft types of products or clothing products. Um... Yeah, so it, it depends on, on the product, but sometimes mailer bags may be the type of packaging for you. Next up is cylinder or tube packaging. So um, often these types of packaging can also actually be used for storage of the actual products. We also have a product that is sold in a cylinder packaging. So it's unique and it's creative. The cylindrical shape itself serves as a a differentiation point. If you guys have ever seen my differentiation, um, product differentiation uh, presentation, which I've presented in many different places, but also on seller sessions, I show how you can use your packaging to be part of your differentiation point. Um, And I also showed there how there was a company that used a cylinder type of packaging as part of the storage for the product as well. So it also gives use to the packaging. It's not something that they would throw away. Um, And there are a few other things that I showed there. So you could find that and watch it as well. It's attracting, it's good at attracting attention and it adds a creative flair to a product, the presentation of the product. Um, It can be made both of paper or plastic. If you think of like Play-Doh, for example, it often will come in a cylinder plastic tube type of thing. Um, and it can also be made out of cardboard, like the images that I've got displayed on the screen. It can be convenient storage and it's very often easy to open. It also can be very giftable, by the way, as well. Um, it can be made in various sizes and, uh, you know, it can be tall, it can be fatter, it can be wider, etc. cetera. Um, can be inexpensive, but it depends on the design. So, yeah, depends on the design. Um Again, this is another type of packaging where it can sometimes you can use it to be part of the differentiation point. Something not very expected could come in a cylinder packaging. I've seen blankets sold in in like a tube package in the past. Um, so you can also 
use it for, for that as well as a differentiation. Um, another type of packaging is an envelope or a flat bag packaging. They, uh, so we also have a very small product that we also sell and it comes in an envelope type of packaging. Been selling it for like seven years, I think. Um, and I've never changed the packaging. It's cost effective. It's uh, pretty cheap. It can be customized. Um, and it's great for smaller products as well. And of course, if you also sell in retail, you can also um, have a little hole at the top or add a little header part to it as well, which can also then be hung. Um, very like it makes sense for small products, not all products, obviously it depends, but also great uh, type of packaging as well. Okay, so clamshell, number eight. Clamshell packaging is a one piece plastic shell that folds into itself, creating a compartment where the product sits. It's like a hinged case that clamps shut often snapping into place. You know those types of packaging where you um, go to buy something, usually for kids, not always, but sometimes for kids, and they require scissors to open, that plastic see-through. I hate clamshell packaging. It's just, it's not only wasteful to the world, but I can't understand how some people sell scissors in it and they put it in clamshell packaging. I need scissors to open the damn thing. You know, I, I don't know, I find that funny. Anyway, so that's what clamshell um, is. It can be sealed in various ways, including adhesive or staples, or even be permanently, um, or even be permanently shut through heating, heating the seal. It's typically made of clear plastic and it's easy to view the product. Very often used for retail, less used for online. Usually needs to be cut or torn open, making it frustrating packaging for consumers, like I just said. Um, cost. It's more expensive than blister packaging, which I'm going to talk about in a second, due to the use of more plastic material. and can be molded to fit almost any type of object, and it's wasteful to the world. I don't love clamshell, but it's a type of packaging, so it's in the podcast. The next type is blister pack. The main difference between blister pack and clamshell is that clamshell um, it has a plastic on, on the front, plastic on the back, and it's just shut. It's, it holds it in place where blister would usually have a uh, plastic back. So it consists of a, of a plastic blister that holds the product, which is then attached to a piece of cardboard or any other material backing. The sealing, the blister is typically heat sealed onto the backing, creating a bond that holds the product in place. Um, plaster, plastic blister is usually clear, allowing for the product visibility, which is great for retail, while the backing can be printed with branding instructions or any other information accessibility they're easier to open than the clamshells usually requiring the consumer to peel back the cardboard backing or uh, puncture the blister which is usually easier than than clamshell um, it's usually less expensive than clamshell packaging because it uses less plastic and it's more of a cheaper material for the backing obviously it depends on the type of product that you're selling uh, you know sometimes these type of see-through packaging may make sense to you the next type is a rigid box. Rigid box um, are the types of boxes that you know iPhones or phones come in very often. They're more luxury type of, of boxes. You know, Rolex and Tiffany and Co, Marc Jacobs, all those types often use rigid boxes. They're more expensive than the other types of packagings I've, I've mentioned here and will mention. Unlike many other type of boxes, boxes rigid boxes don't fold flat which adds to their sturdiness, but also increases shipping volume and cut and costs. If you're buying just packaging, for example, and you want to send it overseas, um, they can't be flattened the same way that a paper box can very often. They can't, it depends. They're made from highly condensed paperboard that is four times thicker. Most, by the way, most, not all that are four times th thicker than the use of standard folding carton or paperboards and, uh, cor corrugated boxes. Um, great for high-end product positioning and also many, many um, gift box type products often come in rigid boxes. Um, we have a few different types of rigid boxes. Just to give you a comparison, um, a paper box may be less than a dollar, depending on size, obviously, and or up to a dollar, let's just say, in many rigid boxes, the t same, uh, the same uh, size product 
coming in a rigid box could be, for example, $2.50, $3.50. It depends, obviously. Very, very dependent what I'm saying. But it can be three times more expensive than a normal paper box, which was the first box I showed as an example. Next type of packaging is bottled packaging. Usually bottled packaging is when you've got some sort of pills or liquid. Um, so obviously there's bottled packaging. Bottled packaging can come in plastic. It can come in glass. Pretty sure it can come in metal as well. Many different types of materials. Um, and obviously it can also have a different type of lid, right? Sometimes it can be um, like a spray type top. Sometimes it can be one that pops open. Sometimes it needs to be unscrewed. I've got many different examples on the screen right now. And then I'm pretty sure it's the last example, um, having a clear PP or PET or PVC box, basically a clear box where it's clear all the way around. They're very retail friendly and often will come with a hang top um, so that it can also be hung. They're not overly expensive, it depends on the size. They can be customized so you can print on them, uh, put stickers on them, whatever it may be. Um, and they can come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. I've got some on the screen as examples. Okay, and then a bonus tip from me, especially if you're using a uh, paper box or um, the envelope types, or a, also you could use it on rigid box. Um, having an anti-tamper sticker can be very, very useful. So in the world of e-commerce, and particularly within platforms like Amazon, maintaining product integrity is paramount. Anti-tamper stickers can play a cr critical role in ensuring that return products have not been used or compromised. Okay, so I've got examples of what a tamper sticker can look like and also where you can place it. So for example, it could be sterile, um, sterile unless packaged, opened, or damaged, check before use. Um, and then if the seal is broken, product is not fit for sale. Okay, um, you can also have clear stickers that say anti-tamper stickers, like it depends. But very, very useful to have... Um, especially in e-commerce when we're dealing with with returns right so um and very often the way that people open it is they'll like cut in the middle so if it is returned to amazon and amazon can see that it's been tampered with hopefully that specific warehouse worker will know not to return it to stock um and then packaging designers so who do i use i like i said i'll make a separate video for when it comes to the psychology but behind the type of packaging that you use and what you need to know about the buyers and about the product and, and positioning and branding, etc. cetera. Um, I put a lot of time and effort into creating a brief for my designer. I specifically use a woman called Milana, who is the founder of Pixel Nuts Studio. Um, I've got her website and email on here. Um, this isn't like sponsored by her or anything. This is just who I use. Studio Pixel, P I X E L Nuts, N U T S dot com is her website. Uh, her, her email is support at studiopixelnuts.com. Milana is an amazing graphics designer. I use her for everything to do with graphics. She's who I use for creating um, packaging. Uh, she can make any types of packaging. That's who I use. Now, I make a really in depth brief for her. I always know exactly what I want on packaging because I do a lot of research around it. But of course, you don't have to be like me. You can also give her freedom of creativity. Um, of course, alternatively, there is also Fiverr and Upwork. There's lots of different graphics designers uh, who, who create packaging. The thing about Milana is that she used to be an Amazon seller. So she also understands positioning on Amazon if you are uh, using your packaging as part of the you know, clickbait of the product. If it's important, for example, I may often, not always, but may often use the packaging in the main image to either help me explain what the product is or show things, you know, specific things or whatever it may be. Um, so she also comes from that background. This is who I use. Um, and and that is it. So we went through, let's quickly go through it. We talked about having anti-tamper stickers. Um, Packaging number 12 was having a PVC box or a PET or a PP clear plastic box. Number 11 was a bottled packaging. Number 10 was rigid box. Number nine was blister packed. Number eight was clamshell. Seven is envelope or flat bag packaging. 
usually for flat types of products like if you're selling I don't know paper or things like that not not only sometimes you'll find other products in there as well um or something that you know is, is flat it can obviously often be used in envelope uh, packaging um cylinder tube packaging was number six uh, number five was mailer bags. Number four is foiled, seal, sealed, or pouch bags. Number three are pillow boxes. Number two, well, we have more. Oops. All right. Then we also had, there was 13 in the end. We also had shrink wrap and vacuum pack. Uh, and then we had OPP bags. And then we had paper box. So paper boxes are probably the most popular box types that I know that most people use. And then OPP bags are also, you know, very, very popular. How to choose what type of packaging is right for you. We'll do in a different video, but I hope that this uh, shines some light for you for um, deciding on the different types of packaging. Or if you didn't know about specific type of packaging, if you have questions, you can always reach out to me. Um, if you are in need in one-on-one -on -one coaching, feel free to reach out to me as well. SharonEvan.com forward slash coaching or Sharon Evan anywhere on social media. All right, and I'll see you all next week. Bye.